Uh oh. Um. I think my game just immediately died. Okay. Holy! Lars here, from the Lars708 channel, bringing you a Minecraft video for a change, because I left my games at my mom's place, so I don't have Silver Chronicles Definitive Edition with me, which is sad, because now I can't make a video for like the third week in a row. Alright, I finally got it to work, that seemed to do the trick, and... Here I am in front of my starter house when I first started this world. Let's just do a quick tour and show what's going on here. This is my mostly single player world. I had some friends help me out here and there, just, well, not really help, more or less, we just play together a bit. But most of the work I did myself. Um, so this is actually um, where I started out in. This is the first house I built, first anything I made. Whenever you spawn in this world, you spawn right over there on that little patch of grass that's surrounded by the river. Oh, oops, hello. Um, and I just figured that I'd climb up and build a house here. So that's what happened, and then a friend came along and he built me a tower, which, you know, it's meant as a little watchtower. It's sad because you cannot see everything because the draw distance on Switch is a little bit trash. <laughs> Did they make the ladder climbing quicker? It feels that way. So yeah, just as like a general viewpoint, and then I built that tower later on, so you can fly more easily. Um, and then furthermore, we have a little animal farm right here, with a few sheep and cows, which I should probably feed, but I'm too lazy for that right now. I haven't played Minecraft in so long. Oh, and they still haven't fixed this nether bug, apparently. So there is this bug that if you exit a nether portal, uh, blocks will disappear and no longer come back, but there is a way to fix it without having to reload the game, because I'm kind of done with waiting. You just make sure the chunks get unloaded, so let's do that with my elite friends and fireworks. I don't know how far I need to go, but I'll just wait until it pops out of view. Is it gone? Okay, I think, I think it's gone. There we go. Let's head back. I mean, I like Minecraft, but one thing I do not like about it is that you kind of have to be very tech-savvy to deal with all the shit the game throws at you, because it's just so buggy. Like, I wonder what's causing the game to be this prone to bugs, and like, pretty game-breaking ones at that, too. There has to be some kind of fundamental issue in the coding for that, and I hope they figure it out, because this is supposed to be the best-selling game ever. And to still have, like, mandatory game features like that not functioning, to me that's kind of crazy. But I still love the game enough to play it. So this is kind of my enchanting house. You will see a lot of beds everywhere because I just want to make sure that you can sleep whenever you need to. There's an easy solution to that if you don't have beds around to just take one with you yourself. But I'm lazy, so I'm not doing that. I have plans to make, like, a little nice connecting plaza area here as well. But I never got around to doing that. And then right here, there's like a semi AFK fishing farm. I think you can like spam it and it will sometimes catch, or maybe you have to wait for it to go down. Oh no, I remember. If the, the bobber goes down on this little strip of water, it will get stuck here and it will keep your fish. So you can just reel it in whenever. And then here, there's more chests to store the caught fish in. So. How do you get down here if you don't have an elytra, you might be wondering. Well, there are several ways you can jump in the water, but the intentional way, which is also kind of the way you get up, because going down is, is usually just you jump in the river and you're done. But if you want to go up, I'm going to show you right now, that's how you do it. And here I have like a little hanging bridge kind of idea, and this is like a farm, and then this entrance is meant to be like kind of hidden. I guess it looks kind of out of place, but I, at the time, just wanted to be space efficient and couldn't make it work any other way. And then there's like this spiraling staircase that goes down to service level. There's a little wheat farm that I needed at the beginning of the game, which I barely use anymore. Um, then right here, this is the entrance to the nether, which we'll come back to in, well, later in the video, because the nether seems like a good point to end it on eventually. I also have to end on in the dragon, 
But there's nothing really there to show off yet, so I'm not going there to waste your time. But yeah, here we are down at service level. And it's nice that I turned off the monsters, because now I don't have to worry about any of that. And I tried to connect everything nicely. So right here, the bridge to the mainland. And this way is to the monster spawner, I think. Right here, we have um, a zombie spawner. And then up here, there's a villager breeder that I built. Honestly, villager breeders is something that I've dabbled with before, before the, the village and pillage update. And then I was like very confused by the mechanics and it wouldn't work properly and it was awful. And then when they changed it again, I just couldn't be bothered to do it again. But honestly, I think overall, I'd say the, the village mechanics are easier to understand since the update. Which is odd to say, because they have gotten more complex, but the whole breeding aspect is actually easier to pull off, I'd say. Because you don't have to do crazy stuff, they can just be self-sufficient. You just build it and essentially it's done. And I have like a whole canal dug out that goes to my artificial village, which I will show off next. We're getting too quickly. Um, let's, let's fly down. Swoop up a bit. And then right here, this is something I like to do. Every time I kill like a, a pillager patrol, I use the banner to decorate the, what do you call it, the village wall. And it's ideal too, because if I have the bad omen status effect, uh, and I summon a raid right here, because this does actually count as a village in the game, uh, the raid actually always spawns outside the boundaries. So I never have to worry about anything getting in. Usually they either spawn like in the river or they spawn on top of the roof there. Uh, with the roof, I mean the roof that you see in the background, not the one of the villager house. Um, so yeah, it's very convenient. The only issue I have is that the Ravager can actually destroy my leaves and I have to replace them every so often and that, that kind of sucks. So here's my artificial village. I kind of tried to make it like an actual village. I just kind of picked out some elements that I liked and then used those. I didn't like really mean to try and recreate it 100% because I also didn't really have space for that. So right here there's like a farmer and a fisherman and here's a butcher and another one which I forgot. I think it's like the, the weapon smith or something. The Fletcher and... No, that might be the weapon smith. I don't remember. Here we have the cartographer and the shepherd, maybe? The cleric and... I forgot the names, I'm sorry. I know that here is librarians with Mending and Frostwalker, because you need those. Those are basics. And then right here I have Stonemason, I think. So many of them. But yeah, that's basically it. And in this one I have storage that's just meant to keep all my emeralds and other things that I've traded for. And a big map of the area. Yep, this is probably the farthest I've come in a single player world. It's pretty nice. I'm proud of it myself. So, moving on, next up is my auto smelter. So this is something I've never done before, but I think in this upper chest, I don't remember exactly because it's been a while since I've last played this, but I think you can just put something in there. And then right here there's coal that gets sucked into the furnaces. And then out here is the output, yep. That's where you can get all the stuff. Sadly, in Bedrock, I don't think the furnaces store XP yet, so it's still wasted. If you're on Java, you can do that and still get your XP, so that's nice. That's why I initially made that, because I was like, oh, I don't want to make auto furnaces, because that's going to waste your XP. But no, not anymore. On Java, it works, but on Bedrock, it doesn't, and I found out the hard way. So this is my, my melon and pumpkin farm. It's a little bit extra, but you know, what do you do? I like having classic farms, by the way. I know there are ways to automate them, but there's just something so soothing about just manually harvesting pumpkins and, and melons. It's not like you need that many anyway, so there's not really a point to, to automate it to me. And oh, hello, cats. This spawn far away from the village, and there's another one. And another one. And my doggo. I don't think I've named you yet, no. I was actually wondering before I made this episode, like, do I even have a dog? Apparently I do. 
Apparently I do. So this is the first farm I built, which ironically is also the biggest one. Normally you start with a small farm. Well, no, not the first farm, because I had the ones up there, the mountain. This is like the first actual building I built for a farm. That's what I should say. And I actually did it with the bees in mind. So I had this idea of having like an outdoor area and then have bees fly around. But then I was like, what if the bees escape? Turns out they don't really escape, they just stay inside or like in, in the radius for... I have... I used to have way more, I wonder what happened to them. Maybe a bunch of them despawned? Honestly, it seems like... It seems like uh, some of them are gone. Because this used to be like entirely full of bees. So whenever I, I harvest like some crops, they grow them immediately with their nectar. They like pollinate all the flowers. Hmm. I don't know what happened to them. I'm, I'm assuming that they despawned or something. It seems to me that there's only enough uh, bees to fill up all the hives. And the ones that are like homeless, those are despawned. I don't know. Mojang, please just fix your game. Okay, so here I built this with the brewing stands in mind. I, I wanted to have like an area with nether wards, so I decided to build something big because I want to be extravagant with everything I do. The actual farm part is tiny and pathetic, but you know, I don't really need more than this, so it's okay. And there's like a little water pool thing for, for glass bottles. This pig just came to visit one day and he got stuck behind this lamp and he's never moved since. He's been there for, for months now. So yeah, there's just a bunch of broom stands right here, and then once you move up, there's more garbage, more chests, and a little, cute little balcony as well. Wow. Uh, and then up here, there's just more storage room. Go figure. Honestly, you need a lot of storage room if you play Minecraft for a long amount of time, because it fills up quick. That's all I can say. So this is, uh, there's another building here actually that I'm not going to show off from the inside, except for like the entrance maybe. But this leads down to a skeleton spawner, you just have to believe me for that. I think it's actually a combination, I think there was like a skeleton and a zombie spawner right next to each other. And it was kind of funny, because when I was making my mob elevator to kill the moth, it actually raised up above the surface. So I made this little hill and tried to make it look natural. And this kind of covers up the mob elevator, because if you dig through this part, I think you will dig through the elevator. I'm not gonna try it right now, because I don't want to break anything, but that's a thing. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the next building, which is, I think, the sugarcane farm. I'm sorry for my awful camera control, I've not played this game in a while, and I'm not used to the inverted camera controls right here. So this is a zero tick sugarcane farm. I think this one broke in an update, or did it not? Let me see. You know what, I will look into this later, but this is supposed to destroy the sugarcane as soon as it grows. It doesn't though. But it doesn't matter, because I think everything's full anyway. Yeah. So this is kind of like an exploit, I think. It's like a glitch that you can zero tick. Uh, essentially what it does, it slides these stairs around and it looks kind of glitchy, but that's it's it's because it is. Because this is a big tower that I don't have a name for. And the windows are really weird too, because I just want to have different designs every floor and I couldn't come up with anything nice and symmetrical, so this is what I did. I like the zigzag there. But yeah, it's a big tower that I made. Uh, with the main purpose that I could fly off easily to other areas of my world. Which, fun fact, I don't even have other areas yet. I had very big plans, as usual, but they never come to fruition. And here's just more storage space, because you can never have enough of that. And then here there's more furnaces, which are kind of pointless now that I have the auto smelter. Um, this is like a, a middle landing point. Or like a middle fly out point. If you fly off from the tower, you can just barely land on here. So if you need to like fly off from that higher area, 
and then get elevated higher up, even because this tower is even higher than that tower. Um, you can land here and then go in the bubble column elevator, because that's what that is. I'm not using it because I want to show off the inside of every floor. But then you can go up and fly off. There's nothing here, actually. I thought there would be, but apparently not. And then there's also nothing here either. Oh. And then there's this big plateau area. So all you can do right now is just jump off and... and... Oh no, my pickaxe! <laughs> I wanted to jump with A. Okay, let's start it again. I'm sorry. I haven't played Minecraft in so long. Like, I honestly don't remember the controls. I just pressed A, because I was like, A is the jump button, right? But no, A is drop your item. B is the jump button, because so I switched that around. Whee! And you get a nice view. It's just a shame that the render distance on the Switch is just so low. Because on my laptop, you can easily see everything. But I cannot record on my laptop, so that's why I'm doing it for my Switch. Normally it's the other way around for people, but hey, I bought this expensive capture card, I'm gonna use it, damn it. And then we're at the last building, I think. We went through this quicker than I would think. I thought it was going to take a long, long while, but no, it's actually not too bad. Oh! So, right here, we have my cafe, which isn't even finished yet, but... The, the idea of this was to remake Brewster's Cafe from Animal Crossing New Leaf, and I failed at that, because the proportions... That, that building has too many details to make in Minecraft scale. But I tried to somehow make it, because this is meant to be like the area in which you can sit with your coffee, and then here's the bar, and you would stand behind here as Brewster, and you'd be like, Koo, have a good evening, Koo, you wanna work for me? And then a random villager will come in if you work for him, and he's like, Ah, oh, give me the usual, please. And you've never helped them or seen them ever before, and how would you know how much milk or spoonfuls of sugar they would want in their coffee? But no, they expect you to know that, and it's awful and, and just pain all around. Anywho, that's Bruce's Cafe. And I kind of made it as a substitute, or like a disguise for my cocoa farm, which, you know, also kind of miniature, kind of small, kind of pathetic even, maybe. But I don't need much, so... A pretty building for a small cocoa farm, but it's there. And I appreciate it for that reason. So I'm actually an idiot, I still need to go to the nether, because in the nether there's a big area that I need to show off. Or at least something that I spend a lot of time on, and I'm really proud of. It's probably nothing compared to everyone's standards when it comes to Minecraft, but for me, it's great. So this is actually kind of funny, because I had big plans for this area, but as you see, it's not that big anymore. I wanted this to be this huge entrance and have these creeper heads, and then even the nether portal also be a creeper head but it kind of turned out to be more effort than I was willing to put into it. However, I think this is probably still the most effort I've ever put into the nether portal area, so... Hey, I think it's nice. So, welcome to hell. This is my nether hub that doesn't have any way of transportation, but hey, it's my nether hub. So, the, the concept behind this is just that I wanted to have some kind of safe haven as soon as you jump out of the portal. And I made this so that it's gas-free. Guests cannot spawn here. And I made it so that there's like a clear direction. Um, this one signals the way to the end, the end dimension, because it's made out of end brick stone, whatever. Uh, is that the right? I think that's the way we should go for the, the fortress as well. Honestly, I don't remember exactly anymore because it's been so long since I played, but let, we will see soon enough. I think that we need to follow the end road to show off my Blaze for farm that destroyed the game earlier. And right here, there's just this little storage room with some nether, nether goods and some other end-related items. Just in case you need it, you know. I, I guess it will come in handy with a new nether update because it will enable so many more biomes and possibilities. I'm really looking forward to that, but it's still not out. I think it's coming out next week, but I don't really have a lot of time next week to play Minecraft, so... 
it will have to wait until some other time. But I'm excited for that. Also, there's this weird bug going on that if you play Minecraft in peaceful mode, uh, ghasts can still spawn for some reason. That's been an issue for ages as well, and they still haven't fixed it. And it seems like a minor thing to me, but as like a minor thing, as like, like not something difficult to fix. But you know, I'm not a Minecraft Mojang game developer, so I don't, I, I can't really say. So this is the blaze farm. Essentially, there's just a blaze spawner, and it drops down all the blazes, and they collect in here, and I can suffocate them with a switch, which is really nice. But uh, apparently there were too many, and it caused my game to lag up, and it wouldn't start up the game. I guess the Switch couldn't handle it. I guess Minecraft was just crappy like that. Like, instead of making them despawn or something, it was just like, nope. I guess I will just crash or something. So, I think that's everything, actually. I'm, that's the second time I'm saying that, because last time I forgot to show off the Nether when I said that, but... Now I really do think it's everything, because there's nothing in the end. The end is that way, but maybe... Someday you will get to see it if I build something there. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos about video games. Thank you for watching and see you all next time. Doei!